Look at how aggressively he just goes to town on the top of this course. And starting things off with a big half cab drop right there. So fast in the landing, he's got to slough some speed before he just drops that mute so far into the landing. And this, this was one of my favorite parts of his run. The high speed butter. The 50, so, foot, 50 foot nose butter? Oh my God. And here, kind of getting a bit off of his line. You can see the tracks, I think, caught him up in the run-in for that jump, which just sent him into that kind of, you know, cork that didn't match up the landing. Mark McMorris from Canada. You didn't um, see him in Jackson Hole because he <laughs> yeah. was in China competing at the Olympics. But his love for this event is proven by the fact that he made sure his first stop was here at Ballface Lodge. The atmosphere here is really good, everyone. It's more into big mountain riding and backcountry snowboarding, but just nice to switch it up and enjoy the mountains. Last season, purple was the color for Mark McMorris. Now, giving us a little bit variations on blue. I like it. And opening up with a backside 360 as he finds his way to this second lip and hitting that pillow line. Ooh, back one off of that. How in the world he was able to adjust and save for that? Because I don't think he meant to hit that so hard. I think you are right. It almost looked like he kind of uh, softened a little buck off of that. The manner in which this this guy can adapt from a slope style course into the backcountry is seamless. Yeah, his body awareness and air awareness is just unfathomable. You see there with that backside 360 and pulling left into, oh, looking to go back to back, but just looks like he came a little short on the landing and got bucked right there. That was incredible, though, just to go backside 360 and make that quick left-hand turn. It looked like you said he came up just short. There was a little lip that sent him off of that landing that he came up short on. Yeah, because that was very clean in the air. Very good, dude. Seriously. I, uh, I was, um, played it a little. Could have played it harder left or harder right on that. Thank you. You guys all ripped. He's yeah, coming in with heavy desire here for the win. So coming in switch, this first hit. Ooh. Half cab <laughs> to the bottom right there. That takeoff was so technical because he can't jump. He kind of has to float off it and suck it up. Oh, yeah. This angle really gives you that perspective of just the speed that is being picked up on the landing. Look how fast he's going. Oh, my oh. gosh, that high speed butter. That was really rad. Snowboarding is pretty <laughs> cool, especially when it's done at this level. And a contest that can reward that, can reward a high speed butter like that. Yo! Oh, no! Switch back, cork three to two. face. Yeah. To face slide, somehow bounce out of it. And just throw a backy. He's not stoked, but we're kind of stoked because I've never seen that before. No, and just, I think, further evidence of his uh, superhuman status. Obviously, winning in Alaska would be insane. It's not necessarily something I feel that is out of reach, but the more time you spend up here, the better chances you have. And I haven't spent a ton of time in Alaska yet, um, sort of building my credentials, if you will. Um, in due time, and it could be this time, it could be next time, I'm not sure, but uh, I'm gonna try and ride my best. The mental game, especially in gnarly terrain like this, is so important. You have to be able to keep your composure because you are riding these things on, on site for the first time. And he is fantastically strategic. You watch him in a slope style contest and he knows exactly how to play the game. And he'll be doing exactly the same thing here. Lovely front side 180, setting up, switch. He's been reading the rule book. Yes. 
and just a quick revert back to his regular stance. It's interesting to see the uh, evolution of the riders kind of learning those ins and outs of what the judges are looking for and how to kind of navigate this terrain within the contest parameters. Well, that's exactly what McMorris has done. He's looked at Dustin Craven's scores from Boldface and gone, he got put through the roof for those switch turns. I'm pulling in there. So I have to feel a little bit like Mark is kind of like familiarizing himself, as you put it so well, range finding the terrain right now. Yeah, he's working this spine. Very similar line to Ben Ferguson up here. And he's come onto this really scary nose. You've got to get your speed right off the end of that. A little bit shorter than Ben Ferguson there, but he gets a lovely transfer. Is he setting up? Nice backside 360, just floating into that landing right there. Beautiful butter out of the bottom as well. Clean set of heels on the face. That was very, very tidy. Super tech up top. He managed to get a bit of freestyle in down at the bottom. Feels like he's ticking all boxes. I do feel that he's holding back a little bit though. I think that, you know, we saw him last year in Alaska really go full send. And Mark has a lot more in the tank. I think that's him getting a run down on his feet, feeling things out and setting himself up for run number two. And he had quite a clinical first run, I feel. And he's, he's definitely in the driving seat here. Oh, beautiful front side 360 to start things off, looking very smooth at the top. He's got that classic. Oh, the front one. So okay. he's, again, we're seeing that big switch riding, drawing out those turns, riding as fast switch as you'll see a lot of people ride normal. That half cab round again. So he's not, arguably, he's doing that as lip service for the judges rather than a really, really technical moment where he's linking it into a big switch takeoff. Exposure with the transfer. Finding a new line there. I mean, Mark looks very, very collected in this run. He looks really, really comfortable in this terrain as well. If you cast your mind back to 2012 at Supernatural, Travis's first iteration of this comp, and he looked, he was so far out of his depth, and now he's one of the, the, the the big players, essentially, the heavyweights of this field. Navigating a backflip off of that second drop yes. right there. I mean, when you see Mark picking his way down, after having done this once already, you know he's, some, he's got something in his pocket. Back three here last time, and he wanted to improve. Oh, big back seven. Goodness. That was huge. He almost ran out of landing there, didn't he? Wow. Okay, so that's putting the pressure on Craven for sure. Okay, it'd be good to take a closer look in the recaps at the landing on that seven to see whether the how hard the judges are going to hammer him for that. I agree. Okay. Kind of pending really what happened that landing. I mean, that was a very solid run. But he's pushed a lot harder than his first run. It was an 80 point, I think. Yes. Too much and then, gas. Oh yeah, definitely too much gas up there, Sparky. There wasn't too much freestyle. He added the seven, added the backflip, and he's starting to. Well, he's. He's only four points shy of Travis. I mean, this is where fantasy leagues become a reality. Mark McMorris versus Torstein and Horkmo in the Alaskan backcountry. <laughs> That's insane. Okay, so Mark getting in early onto this big plateau, just straight lining it, pinning it down there. Oh, a beautiful butter. <laughs> just holding on to it. Ambassador, you're spoiling us. Look at that, and then right out onto the nose of this. Super technical. Billy goating his way through there. Right up on top again. Morris has made a real statement about his big mountain credentials here. Oh yeah, he's navigating the spine so well right now and just popping a really easy backside 360 right there before going cross court. And he did get the tail grab on it. We haven't had many big, solid, confident grabs today and I think that means a lot. Well, I think that's one thing definitely in going, oh, into a front side three, holding on no problem right there, is that in this kind of terrain, I mean, usually you would see these riders in a video part in a contest really getting to kind of hold on and yank that grab for an extended period of time. But this kind of terrain makes that so much more difficult. <gasps> oh my Back five and he holds on! He has to revert out of it, but he held on through that. The judges aren't gonna punish him for that, I don't think. Okay, so this is a great run. He has that top, very technical section. The crowd rejoices and then a litany of solid freestyle hits in the lower section. Nice work, buddy. 
That ha it, that really was a tiramisu run, wasn't it? It's got a little bit of everything in it. Some super, super tech riding up at the top. And then some spicy freestyle down at the bottom. Definitely pressure put on Torstein now. <laughs> like, it's not like he was in the backcountry readying himself for the natural selection tour. He had to worry about a whole other contest. So this, this is him shifting his focus and having really no problem at all doing that. Okay, he's got to beat a 95. It is going to take, let's not make any bones about this, a oh. very, very special run. Huge butter up the top. Clicks around to switch, so he's taking a leaf out of Torstein and Travis's book with the cab five. Oh, oh. and over the bars. Travis and Torstein haven't, they haven't, it's not that they haven't put a foot wrong, they haven't put a hair out of place right. on those runs. And it means that, that cleanliness is next to godliness up here. Completely, to have runs that are that clean, I mean, this is just flabbergasting, it's, it's, it's immaculate. It's that lovely wildcat. Getting caught up a little bit right there on his toe edge. It looked like he was trying to get barreled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and going front three, holding it together. Oh, not quite. Imagine having the spatial awareness to be able to save something like that. Oh, any, yeah. more, any mortal would have had their head in the snow yeah. <laughs> on that one. And somehow he gave it the sprocking cat and managed to bring it round. Pop and a half cab for the fans down at the bottom. Yeah, you get the feeling, I think after that that hit on the cab five, I think Mark almost let it go at that point. He's like, you know what, I'm not gonna take him down here. 